Hello, my guest here is Brendan Strock, founder of the Walk Away Movement. Brendan, thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me. So we've talked to you before. I want you to tell me, starting from where you were as a Democrat, how did you end up walking away? How did this happen? In 2016, I voted for Hillary Clinton after a life of be- lifelong you know, uh, devotion to the Democrat Party and loyalty to liberalism, the ideology of liberalism. When the media went completely insane because Donald Trump got elected, first of all, there was the whole aspect of that, you know, he was definitely not going to win. That's what they kept telling us. So then there was sort of the shock and confusion uh, that he did win. And then they kind of went into overdrive with, I think, all of the, the, the false narratives and the, you know, the racism and the exploitation of, you know, social injustice and all these different things. And so things were just like not adding up to me and making much sense. And then I was trying to understand why anybody voted for him because... I had been kind of buying into that narrative up until that point. And a couple of months after the election, I'd gotten on Facebook and I asked a a simple question, which was, you know, why would anybody vote for this man who stood before a cheering crowd and mocked a reporter's disability? Like, why was that not enough? What happened to the soul and the conscience of middle America? And that's when somebody reached out to me with a video clip entitled Debunking that Trump Mocked the Disabled Reporter which showed very conclusively that this was something that the media had spun out of context because Donald Trump has done that same voice and gesture numerous times as he did that day when he was accused of mocking the reporter's disability. But on that day, the media represented it as though he were making fun of someone's disability. And that's when my eyes started to get open to this concept that the media that I trusted was capable of, you know, engaging in total mistruth and um, uh, kind of spinning sound bites and uh, out of context and creating their own narrative. and. I went on a very long journey of research after that, which ultimately led to me walking away from liberalism, the liberal media, the Democratic Party, because it's all intertwined. I mean, it's, you know, the news that we watch is really just a propaganda arm for that party. It's all tied together, and so I walked away from all of it. And what are some of the values that drew you to conservatism? Well, that's a good question, because when I did walk away from liberalism and the Democrats, I didn't walk immediately to the Republican Party or conservatism or Trump. I mean, there was actually a good period of time when I thought to myself, well, I can't be a Democrat because I can no longer abide, you know, by their their values and their principles or lack thereof. But I'm sure as hell not going to become a Republican and I'm not I'm not going to become a Trump supporter. And it was it, it took probably four, five, six months of me really kind of studying why conservatives believe what they believe, watching interviews and debates and things with uh, conservative figures that in the past I didn't even want to listen to or watch or be open to. And suddenly I started finding myself sort of looking at everything in a whole new light and understanding it in a whole new way. And I, the things that I was, uh, you know, in the past so against suddenly were starting to make more and more sense to me. And, Do you but, give us an example? Well, yeah, like when people were arguing, say, for uh, immigration or the Second Amendment, you know, I was, as a liberal, without doing much thinking, you know, I was kind of sta- staunchly like, ban guns, let's ban guns. You know, there's all these mass shootings, and so obviously the solution to the mass shootings is to take guns away. Because it was, it's, uh, it was the group thing, you know, I mean, it was kind of the herd, herd mentality that, you know, this is what liberals think, so obviously this is like the right solution to these problems. Another example I would say is the abortion debate. Now, without even having to necessarily take a stance on abortion, what I started to realize was the way in which liberals frame a lot of their arguments are so disingenuous and based on attacking the morality of other people rather than the issue itself. As a liberal, I believed that people were, um, I believed that conservatives were against abortion because they wanted to control women and control women's bodies. That's how the argument is framed. Well, you're trying, it's men trying to control women. When in fact, what I learned, you know, is that conservatives really just believe, or many of them anyway, believe that life begins at conception and it's about trying to protect what they consider to be a human life, which begins at the moment of conception. So it's just little things like that where I started to see that even down to the way that they frame their arguments are often so disingenuous and kind of, it's designed to attack the the character and the moral morality of the other person rather than simply debate the issue at hand. Do you have a couple more examples? Really yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, illegal immigration. I definitely, I think as a liberal, was very much of the mind that uh, America has an overabundance. We have too much. We'll always have too much. Um, America is impervious to failure. And therefore, it is our obligation to share what we have with other people who 
don't have as much as we have or who simply want more than what they currently do have. And so my, my mentality as a liberal was basically, uh, why shouldn't we let anybody into this country who wants to come into this country? And if the, if the system is designed in such a way that it's too difficult to get in or it's unfair, then whatever. I mean, if people, you know, get in, find a way to get in, whether it be swimming in or cr illegally crossing in or whatever, then good for them. And they, they should deserve the same American chance as everybody else. And then I started to realize when I actually studied these issues, the negative impacts that illegal immigration has uh, on all different aspects of America, but particularly as a liberal, most liberals will tell you, well, you know, we care about that we, being liberals, care about black people, brown people, you know, marginalized communities, but black and low income, black and brown people are the, are the uh, demographic that's most dispro disproportionately affected by illegal immigration. And so you start to see that, like, if you actually care about, if you care about people, low income people, if you care about racial minorities, then you should care about having strong borders and strong security. And so that's another thing I started to change my mind about. And another example of the way in which they sort of frame it you know, you're a racist if you're if you want to support the borders, or if you're if you support having a wall, it's because you're a racist, or because you a white supremacist, or whatever. It's it's all bogus, and but you start to see that when you start to really understand what conservatism is all about. So, well, Walkaway is going to turn two years old in May, so we're not we're just over a year and a half old at this point. And what we were doing last year was focusing on uh, getting into college campuses with the Walkaway Thought Revolution College Campus Tour. Uh, we were doing events um, for minority communities, the Walkaway Black American Town Hall, uh, LGBT Town Hall, Hispanic American Town Hall, because we're trying to get as many minority uh, individuals to walk away from the left and leave, again, that herd mentality and group thing. And we're really excited to be offering on May 1st the very first Walkaway American Women's Town Hall, which is um, going to be in Nashville, Tennessee, May 1st. And at the end of the year, on October 3rd, we have the Unsilent Majority March on Washington in Washington, D.C. Uh, again, we want to bring people from around the country to say that there is going to be no such thing as the silent majority anymore. We want the silent majority to become unsilent. And because the left exists, because we have allowed the creation of the left through our silence. And so we want people to start speaking up fighting back and no longer being in the closet about their conservatism or their support of President Trump or their republicanism or what have you. We want people to push back and fight back and speak up. Can you articulate um, for the for the liberals who are maybe going to watch this, um, there will be some, <laughs> what points of research would do you think uh, they should do in order to understand better the position, the liberal position, and then also the conservative? Well, I would say, I mean, a good starting point, I think, is, you know, that's, we actually wanted to create that with Walkaway to a certain degree because, you know, what we're trying to do is talk to liberals on their level, kind of as former liberals come to them and say, look, we know why you think what you think, and here is something else that we want you to look at. And so we created an educational video series that we call The Hard Truth. The Walkway Presents Hard Truth. These are on YouTube, five minute episodes, uh, different speakers speaking on different themes. Um, we have different conservative influencers who are doing these different topics. And we talk about things like liberal media bias, like social media censorship, um, uh, racism and uh, uh, segregation and uh, slavery and uh, uh, anti-Semitism and voter registration and socialism versus capitalism, all of these different topics that I think that the left has sort of skewed the narrative on, as well as different media talking points. My episode is the first episode, which is liberal media bias. And I address things like the, did Trump mock the disabled reporter? And uh, you know, there, the Time Magazine put out a cover with Donald Trump next to a little girl crying who appeared to be separated from her mother. But Time Magazine actually cut that girl out, stuck her on the cover. She was never separated from her mother. So we want people to start being more analytical, more skeptical, more engage in more critical thinking when engaging in the news and to start doing their own research and to think for themselves and to kind of turn on that light bulb because the media is manipulating all of us. And so it's I think it's up to us to to take back kind of our own education and, and our own, take our own minds back, you know, kind of disconnect from the mind control, I think, of, of the media. Well, Brendan, thank you so much. Yes, it's very important. We all need to take responsibility yes. for our own thoughts and make sure they are really our own. Yeah. Thank you so much for thank speaking you, with me. Nice talking with you. Thank you.